Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and as you can probably hear from my voice, still kind of sick. So in this video we're going to continue um, our exploration of Space Engine and how you can edit things, but we're also going to add a little bit of programming concepts in here and generate a system that you may have seen in one of the previous videos with like lots and lots of planets. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And in this video, if you would like to follow along, uh, you may want to download and install um, Anaconda Navigator and then basically launch this thingy called Jupyter Notebook, which is, like it says right, right here, it's a web-based uh, notebook for Python, the language we'll be, we're going to be using today. So why are we actually using programming? Well, let me explain to you my problem and uh, what I wanted to create. As you've seen in the video where I created the um, super large mega system, uh, of 42 planets around uh, the, this random star that is essentially a copy of our sun, I could have done it um, by hand. I could have actually manually entered every single planet and, uh, you know, it would probably take me maybe, I don't know, like half an hour to do, but I am by nature pretty lazy and that's why I learned programming because it allows you to do everything that you could have done much, much faster, much, much easier and also without any mistakes. So we're going to take this star, which we created in one of the previous videos, or actually I think it's the video from yesterday, and uh, we're going to create a bunch of planets in a ring around it. And then we're going to create several of those rings and um, add it all in the same system. Now, uh, if you don't know how to add planets, do check out the video from yesterday that kind of explains it a little bit. But today we're going to do a little bit of programming. So first, we need to collect all of this info from over here, and we basically are going to copy all of this, although I'm actually going to erase some of the stuff that I don't really need, and put it into the notebook, which is the Jupyter Notebook right here that I just created. This one is just called Planets. And by the way, the code for this is available in the link in the description below. I decided to put it on a GitHub, just create a new um, GitHub just for this purpose. So here, what we're going to do, copy this info from the previous video, and this is actually uh, the parent body we created in the last video, so this might be different for you. Everything else might be actually kind of similar. I'm going to also replace this. So we're going to change names automatically. So we're going to replace this part with uh, a symbol. And I'm going to show you what kind of symbol we're going to use in a second. Uh, but first, let's actually change this to what's known as a string in Python by adding uh, the triple string. If you add a triple string, you can then basically turn this whole thing into a very, very large string. And I'll just add this here. So now if I print this out, you can see that it actually displays everything as it were a string. So here, um, Python has this really cool feature. If you add the squiggly brackets twice here, um, you can now basically replace um, the things inside of this string by um, something else. And specifically by using dot format, I can now replace this with any name, for example, my name. I can essentially change the name of the planet to my name. So this is something we're going to be using in a second because we're going to use this format to replace all of the names uh, for all of the planets automatically. We also need to replace one more important feature, which is right here, mean anomaly. So we're going to add another one here. And the way it works is as follows. You basically add a number here. And so you can see how mean anomaly got replaced here as well. So we're only replacing two of these for now. We're going to do the um, seven major axis a little bit later. For now, let's just do this. So this is how we're going to start. I do need to change something here, though. Uh, the thing about this part right here is that if you actually copy this originally, it'll only have one school game bracket, but you actually have to add another one for Python to interpret it as um, a squiggly bracket inside the actual text. If you just have one, it will not work. So you have to place one here, one additional one here. You have to place one additional one here, one additional one here, and also here. So this way it will actually work correctly. All right, so now let's actually create a uh, variable. We're going to define this as a variable. Uh, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it planet info or something like that. And so now uh, all of my stuff is available inside this planet info. So you can see I can actually display it. 
Um, it doesn't really look like it does here, and if, and if you've never used Python and don't know what this means, it basically is just, uh, it's it sort of interprets it directly. So the slash n here means new line. The um, spaces here, this is tabbing. So basically that's when you tab something. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. There we go, tabbing. Um, and everything else is... It, it looks weird, but it's going to look right when we put it in the file. Just trust me. So we're actually going to do this right now. So let's put all of our planet info stuff in the file. And we're going to do this as follows. There's a command in Python called with open. We're going to save it as planets um, dot... What's the format again? I keep forgetting the format that they use. And it's sc. So, all right. So, uh, planets.sc. And we're going to save this directly into the same folder um as our python file here i'm going to use the append command which is basically um it's kind of like write command so it's going to write the file but instead of just writing it's going to append new things to the file if we change it and if it doesn't exist it will create a new file so uh here we're going to write the planet info and that means we need to write f dot write planet info and that's really it so now if I run this, nothing happens. And that's because if I go to my Python folder where I have this file, which is actually my home Jupyter um, folder, right here somewhere, planets, planets, there it is, planets SC. There it is, look at that, planet Anton, uh, blah, 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 minimum 123. So it looks pretty good. So we're, we're now able to uh, automatically create an actual file that will be read by Space Engine, and it looks pretty good. But we need like 42 of these. Um, that's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Actually, we need more than 42 because we're putting several rings in there, but for now, we're just going to do 42. So the only thing we change in here are the names and the mean anomaly. Uh, for now, at least. We're, we're, we're then going to change some major axis to place the rings. So going back to the original file, and I might as well actually erase the planets file because we don't really need it right now. We're going to uh, change this a little bit. So first of all, this formatting will actually accept two variables. One of them is, will be a name, uh, not name, name, name of the planet. And the other one is going to be anomaly. So we're going to make these right now because they don't actually exist yet. Uh, to make these, we're actually going to, um, well, if you're just starting Python, you can just start in the beginning. You can say, okay, name equals, um, anomaly equals, this, this will generate them automatically so here we could have entered anton uh but we're not going to do it this way we're, we're going to do this automatically using uh, a loop and here we're going to be using a for loop so um as soon as we open the file what we're going to do is we're going to write a loop that will run i guess um 42 times so here uh the loop is going to look like this for x in the range 41. the reason it's 41 is because uh, computer started counting with zero, so it's going to count zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And because it's a loop, we're now going to indent this and add something else. So for every count here, what we're going to do is the name will change. It will become name plus number. And the uh, mean anomaly will also change by essentially doing a little bit of math here. So first, let's start with the name. Name equals to, and we're going to name these planets Earth earth plus x and because x here will be a number from 0 to 41 it will just be earth 0 earth 1 earth 2 and so on and the second part here is going to be the anomaly anomaly equals um and we're going to make it equal to this i am copying this from another file that i had uh so here it's 360 degrees because it's a circle divided by 42 which is number of planets replacing was it 42 or 41 I think it was 42. Okay, just to confirm, yeah, it is 42 planets in the same orbit. So, going back here, uh, divide by 42, and x here was once again a number. And so it's basically going to do a very simple arithmetic here. 0 multiplied by this, which will be 0, which is the first planet. Then 1 multiplied by this will give you a slightly different number. I think it's about 8 or something. And then it's, uh, it will just keep going up and up. Um, the only thing I forgot to change here is I need to change this to a string, because otherwise it will not work. So this has to become a string. All right, so we have our names, we have our anomaly. And now what we're going to do is, uh, I need to actually somehow put these guys in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this whole thing into a function. 
This is a pretty cool way of doing things in Python. So here, uh, we're going to create a function called planetoid. And here, we're going to put the name an anomaly um, into the function. It's going to run through this. And every time it changes, it's going to use a, a changed name, an anomaly. And then we're going to just return uh, the actual values inside the string code planet info. So this whole thing will be returned every time it runs. And it's going to run it 42 times. And it's going to be super fast. Uh, you, you won't actually even notice it. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to write all of this info um, into the file. But instead of planet info, we're now are writing the planetoid stuff. So we're just writing this planetoid with the name anomaly that we're going to be entering from here. So this loop will create a name, create an anomaly. It's going to be entered into the function. It runs to the function, returns back planet info to us, and that stuff is written down into the file. Let's run this. No mistakes. It's all done. That's it. It's finished. So let's go and open up the file and see what it looks like. And hopefully it actually looks fine. Now, I have a bad feeling about some things not showing up correctly. And... Huh. Okay. So as you can see, we do have all our planets. There's basically 42 of them. But I need to double check something. Okay, so first of all, Earth 40 is the last one. So, okay, it created 41. So, my bad. I should have done this 42, not 40, not 41. Uh, Mid anomaly here is changing every time. That's good. And the planet name... Okay, so this is what's missing. We're missing squiggly brackets. Not squiggly brackets, sorry. We're missing the uh, parentheses. So I need to add it to a planetary name. So I'm going to actually erase this file one more time. And go in here and actually add the squiggly brackets inside. Um, also, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to do the following. I'm going to put the name right here because I think it's creating a space that shouldn't be there. And I'm also going to add a new line using slash n right here because that way I think it actually will be formatted more realistically and we're also changing this to 42. So this was my bad. I kind of miscalculated there. Running again. So as you can see, it's already done. It created a completely new file just now. And I actually decided to open this in Notebook++ just to see how it looks like because I remember the formatting in the other ones. So yeah, okay, this actually looks pretty good. Earth 2, Earth 3. Although, am I having too many indentations here? I don't know, we'll find out. We're gonna place this file um, into Space Engine in a second. Earth 41 is the last one and Earth 0 is the first one. So that's 42 planets, perfect. So let's test this. So let's actually uh, close this file and copy our file uh, right here onto planets. So this is actually inside the add-ons, catalogs. So okay, this, this is your main space engine folder, add-ons, catalogs. Uh, there's a new folder called planets and this is where we put in planets. So now all I have to do is basically start over my space engine and see what's up. And here you go. Here is your beautiful creation of 42 planets orbiting in the same orbit around the uh, sun-like star. We can actually go check out one of them just for fun. And here is just one of many of these worlds uh, procedurally generated by Space Engine. This one actually has rings of its own, which is pretty cool. And its neighbors here, if you look around, will look... There they are. Will look pretty magnificent. There's quite a lot of them. So um, this is the first part. And then the next part, what I wanted to show you is how to create uh, several rings and how to also create rings that orbit in the opposite direction because we want to add not just one, but eight rings to make this the ultimate um, solar system or star system in this case. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully you learn how to use a little bit of Python to generate files really quickly and lots of files and uh, save yourself time in the future. So Python is definitely worth learning. Anyway, I'm going to call this new series Python Fridays. And once in a while, every Friday, we're going to release a video that will teach you something new. Thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully my voice will get better soon. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.